Lira, Lira, Lira. Oi, oi, oi. Okay, Lira is. Everything seems normal as I continue to explore the garden, but I can't convince my subconscious of that. The leaves on the trees are a healthy green. The birds are singing as they fly through the branches, and occasionally a squirrel or a raccoon darts into hiding as I draw near. What a quiet garden. I continue to wander aimlessly among the ancient trees until I come to a lake. The water is a clear blue and reflects the bright sunlight. A marble path rings the lake. Okay. I cross the path and walk down towards the bank. I've spotted something down there, closer to the water. Drawing closer, I see uh, that a blue notebook as well as a pen has been set on the rock beside the shore. Who left these here? One of the princesses? Or perhaps a maid? What shall I do with it? Okay, we can open the notebook or we can leave the notebook alone. And from experience, this will get us hurt. So open or leave the notebook alone. What do you guys think? Leave it alone. Sounds like a good idea. I may be stripped of my titles, but that doesn't mean I should act common. It is implied to tamper with another's belongings. <clears throat> Excuse me. I stand to the side, determined to wait and guard the notebook until its owner comes looking for it. Three days later. Not long after I begin my vigil. There comes a girl in a maid's uniform. She seems anxious as she hurries along the path. It looks like she is coming my way. Greetings, sir. Have you by any chance seen a blue notebook around here? Yeah, got the right voice for that. Her voice is soft and humble. <sighs> Thank you. She smiles gently, but it doesn't reach her harried eyes. I believe what you're looking for is right over there. I indicate the notebook on the rock. Oh, thank you so much. Losing her diary put her highness in such a foul mood she'll be relieved to recover it. Her own relief is written plainly on her face, in Byro. I'm glad that I could help. My name is Marion. Maid Marion. <laughs> I hadn't heard that we were expecting any visitors or new residents in the garden. Maid Marion. <laughs> what may I call you? Her tone gives away a hint of weariness and distrust, and, and this is tearing my throat apart. My name is Arel Rice, Lady Maid. I was sent to the Guardian by our Emperor to prepare for the miracle play. Not made Marion, not made Marion, no! I show her the letter of appointment, she reads it, then she turns it upside down and reads it again. Once she finishes, she bows to me. It is as you say, please forgive my ill manners. Is there anything I can do for you at this time, sir? I appreciate the offer. Could you tell me more about life here in the Oblivious Garden? Well, this part of the garden belongs to Princess Lyra. She answers... Mm, ah, <clears throat> she answers nervously. As we are talking, a girl approaches. Her demeanor is cool. Her eyes are as blue as the lake we're standing beside. They're like twin sapphires. Her arms are crossed, and the rhythmic tapping of one of her fingers suggests her impatience. Her tiny mouth is twisted in a scowl. Marion? Yes, mistress? Stay away from that man. As you command. The girl glares at me disdainfully. 
I pull my trousers up so she can no longer see it. Who are you? Mistress is... I didn't ask you. Stand aside, Maid Marian. Why are you here in the garden of princesses? Her whole body radiates a royal arrogance. My name is Arel Rice, and I am here by His Majesty's command. You lack a nobleman's manners, Arel Rice. I lack a nobleman's title, Your Highness, though once I was a baron. I should have guessed. Only a plebeian could be as rude as you are. This shore is adjacent to my personal palace. You are intruding by coming here without my permission. Forgive me, I did not intend to trespass. I didn't know this area of the garden was private. You don't like much, Miss Fujimoto. <coughs> Excuse me. Ignorance of the law excuses no one, former Baron Aurel Rice. You really should have inquired before you went wandering about the garden. You should have known better. Hello, Haley Round. I'm glad you cheered up. Nothing I say will appease her. She is determined to find fault in me. It's best if I hold my tongue. And put that tongue back in your mouth. Oh, well, I suppose I shouldn't expect any better from a plebeian. However, I have a different question. Mr. Harrell Rice, did you read my diary without my permission? I did not, Your Highness. Well, who can say for certain? Marion, how long was it between when we left it here and when you returned? I suppose it was about an hour. An hour is a long time. You could have done anything in an hour. You could have read my diary and placed it back as you found it. Well, now you mention it, I, I think you're probably going to want to check pages 6 and 7 before they stick together. Can you prove that you did not read it? I will swear on my honour that I did not. Honour? You expect me to trust in a plebeian's honour? I don't know what else to say. My thoughts are a tangle. Any explanation I try to formulate collapses. Have you anything else to say, former Baron Arel Rice? If you are not, please leave. You are not welcome here. She's enjoying this, isn't she? What else can I do? Marion. Yes, mistress. Eat this plebeian out. As you command, mistress. Mr. Arel Rice, if you would. Oh, wrong voice. Mr. Arel Rice, if you would. Please follow me. I know the way out. But. Leave him be, Maid Marion. Let's go back as well. As you wish, mistress. I take a deep breath as I watch them depart. Rage, anger, and shame, all warring for dominance of my heart. I was such a fool. I could have gone my way when I found the diary. I could have easily spoken up for myself and shown her the papers commanding me to come here. This was my fault. At least something about being here finally feels familiar. Now, one of the princesses I have come to tutor hates me. I sigh and walk back the way I came, leaving the lake behind. Where are we? This leaves us with... Zanning. So let's give this a... Let's, go, let's, let's see what she has to say. I am a soldier by stock and by trade, so naturally the fencing hall was one of the, f the first things I started looking for when I entered Oblivious Garden. The servants directed me to a path lined by walls of green bushes and decorated with blossoming flowers. I am pleased to find that the privacy the walls add makes it a nice place for a quiet walk. Yes, pink plops. 
It all seems heavily cultivated in stark contrast with the more natural woods throughout the garden. There are statues, fountains, sculptured strapperies, plan pruned plants and paved pathways. I suppose this level of beauty and maintenance is normal for the residents of the princesses. I have come to a fork road. The library should be down one path and the fencing hall down the other. It is still early in the morning and even the smallest plants in the garden are still... A... Even the smallest plants in the garden are still... Even the smallest plants in the garden are still casting long shadows. There shouldn't be anyone in the fencing hall this early. I walk confidently towards the hall. A part of my duty here will be to serve the princesses as their new fencing instructor. This is where I belong. At the end of a winding path, I finally catch my first glimpse at the magnificent white dome. Next to it is the fencing hall. The long hike it took to get here might have made me disgruntled if I hadn't seen my destination by now, but having my goal in sight spurs me on. The rising sun continues to improve my view of this marvellous training centre. Life is rough when you first join the army. It's a pig's life. No, 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 let's not do Monty Python. Though it gets easier in time, however, the best you could ever say about the accommodations would be that the cabins are quaint. If I were to describe this building in one word, it would be grand. But I feel it is lacking something. Walls, for example. I walk up the steps and try the doors. They don't fit. I'm in luck. The first door I try is unlatched. The oblivious garden is well guarded. I suppose I guess those who live here don't feel the need for locks. I enter the hall, closing the door gently behind me. I finally understand what I felt before when the door clicks shut. What the garden lacks is the prosaic side of life. The corridor I find myself in is brighter than I expected. Looking up, I see that the entire ceiling is made of glass. What extravagant architecture! What extravagant architecture! Portraits of the emperors of Salandru hang on one side of the corridor. They serve as a solemn reminder of the pride, honor, and dignity of this empire. The princesses here, as members of the royal family, inherit their ancestors' responsibilities and burdens. One of the ways they will fulfill their duty is by their performance in the coming miracle play. And as part of their preparation for the miracle play, each one of them must learn fencing. But I can't help feeling that they have no business training in such an end feminine skill. I still believe that it is a soldier's duty to protect his country. So all the girls should hold a sword shouldn't hold a sword in any case. But the Emperor sent me to teach them the art of fencing. I accepted it silently, not because I am obeying the orders as a soldier, but because I am just too tired to resist it. When I see the portrait of a current Emperor, Palpatine, it means that I am at the end of the corridor. An oak door appears in front of me. I open it quietly and step inside. The door disappears. The morning sun shines on the clean floor of the circular training room. I take a deep breath, then I put it back again. The smell of fresh air and training equipment fills my lungs. It's invigorating. This feeling is familiar. My heart stirs with a passion I had almost forgotten. My muscles ache to give in to the instincts I drilled into them through years of harsh training. But I no longer have a sword. With my lowered status, it isn't necessary or proper for me to carry one anymore. I can still go through some of the basic exercises, though. While warming up, I suddenly notice there is someone standing beside one of the windows. How could I have missed her? Gorgeous long hair hangs down like black silk, with a mild sheen under the morning sun. 
The immaculate face with delicate features looks like a piece of white jade. She stands silently, eyes closed, frowning and motionless. While not very tall, her figure is appealing. What a flowery aged girl. Her clothes look like traditional Eastern garb to me, a match to the ethnicity of evident in her face. She is also holding a sheathed weapon. I thought it was a sword, but considering the long slender blade and how it lacks a weighted pommel on the hilt, it must be a machete. How can I e I can even feel its sharpness? She makes a deep impression on me, possibly with the machete, perhaps due to the simple fact she is carrying such a powerful weapon. If she is not a belle of rare charm, the only words which could describe her would be unmatched beauty. I pray that this is one of the princesses I have been sent to instruct. Yes, instruct. But for a princess, she seems so, so dim. She doesn't radiate arrogance, luxury or raw sexuality in the way that I would expect. She blends into her surroundings so well that it took me a while to notice she was even there. Hmm. I stand silently for some time. All the different ways I could introduce myself stir through my mind. Each one is weakened by the calm of the morning light and struck down in the face of her silence. Time passes quickly. Then I finally realize a question. How much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? Why has she been standing there all alone, motionless on this fine morning? She isn't sweaty. Her clothes aren't dishevelled, and she isn't breathing heavily. She isn't a taking a break between bouts of practice. I think of another question. So tell me, is it true that princesses can pee through a dozen mattresses? But that posture... Zanshin? Bless you. I finally remembered the word I was looking for, and sneezed it out. And what it means. Zanshin! is an Eastern martial art. It emphasizes the power of the spirit over that of the body. Those Eastern people believe that a strong spirit is the key to a strong body. They claim that those who lack strength of soul but train only to attain a strong body will become twisted and corrupt like demons. Once when I asked one of my instructors if he could teach me some Zanshin postures, he told me it just wasn't about posture, it's an attitude, an ideal, a way of life. Something about it belong, belonging, uh, something about it being a commitment to stand vigilant and to demonstrate willpower at all times. Their beliefs sounded different, difficult to hold and their techniques looked almost impossible to master. I imagined the hardest aspect of following that school of thought would be holding your resolve and never once wavering from the path of the discipline. Could it be could this slight and unassuming princess really be a swordmaster? If that is so, then why did his majesty send me here? What more do I have to offer such a girl? Although I am confused by what I'm supposed to teach her, I am eager as well. I've never had a chance to meet a practitioner of this style of combat before. Good night, bit late. I'm still trying to remember anything I can about Zanshin when suddenly the girl opens her eyes. She looks at me. I look at her, then I look at her eyes. Her eyes are purple, the color of nobility. They radiate serenity and sincerity. Hmm. 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 Time goes by and we stare silently at each other's eyes. At the start, I remember I may be in the presence of royalty. My actions thus far have been uncouth. I immediately bow my head and introduce myself in a clear voice. My name is Aurel Rice, on the orders of His Majesty Palpatine. I have come to serve the princesses as the princess's fencing instructor, 
Please excuse me if I've interrupted your practice. As she listens to my words, the girl's frown deepens and she closes her eyes again. I did interrupt her. I begin to formulate a more thorough apology, but my thoughts are interrupted before I can get it out. All the apology. She opens her eyes again. Her face gives away no emotion as she whispers to me. A real rise. She repeats my name back to me. There is recognition recognition in her eyes of course a real princess would know who i am from her the servants she looks at me in the eyes as she continues speaking guardian of the empire that was the one who brings victory my heart begins to ache as she recites the different names and titles i'd borne the reincarnation of the paladin her eyes start to twinkle, but she goes on. Betrayer. The shame of the Empire. In a steady voice, the girl recites all of my names, former names, current names, all of them I had ever heard. She acknowledges every aspect of my past and present. I stand up straighter, barely managing a smile as she gives a complete account of my past through names. She speaks... As she speaks, she watches me through those watery eyes. Compassion and sympathy. Oh dear, I am having problems now. <clears throat> I stand up straighter, barely managing a smile as she gives a complete account of my past through names. As she speaks, she watches me with those watery eyes. Compassion and sympathy swimming in her unwashed unshed tears when she finishes speaking she closes her eyes and walks towards me I stand aside to allow her room to pass on her way past me she whispers something I hadn't heard anyone say about me before confused and scared as a lost child she leaves without turning back her sl her slim body disappears behind the door only a slight fragrance in the air is left behind to prove she was ever here. A fragrance and the beating of my heart, which is far faster than normal for some time after her departure. Things I had intentionally forgotten are now floating to the forefront of my thoughts. Truths I had hidden from myself have been brought back to the light. The false courage I had built in exile is once again overshadowed by doubt. I grow increase, increasingly depressed. Though it is still early in the morning, I am no longer in the mood to train here alone. The ghosts of my past seem to lie in wait behind every corner. But none of the thoughts or memories I am struggling to deal with once again can erase the memory of those noble eyes. After a brief rest, I leave the fencing hall. Get item. Blueberry. <laughs>